Colonel Montano at the time was one of the top military officials in the El Salvadoran Armed Forces. There was a small group of individuals who essentially operated by consensus on the steps that the armed forces would take. And he was very much part of the planning of the Jesuits massacre. He came to the United States to try to make a new life for himself. He lied on his immigration papers about his past involvement with the El Salvador Armed Forces. And when we pointed that out to the Department of Homeland Security and what his actual record is, they arrested him, prosecuted him, and convicted him on immigration fraud. I'm Dixon Osborne. I'm the Executive Director of the Center for Justice and Accountability. The mission for the Center for Justice and Accountability is to deter torture, war crimes, crimes against humanity, other severe human rights abuses through litigation and policy advocacy. There are about 1,900 suspected war criminals living in the United States from 50 countries around the globe, and we will try to track them down and see if we can build a case against them. So the best option in the case of Colonel Montano for criminal accountability is to actually extradite him to Spain. Spain is one of the few countries in the world that has what is called the inquisitorial system. That means that the judges investigate. Unlike the United States with the Department of Justice, in what is called an accusatory system, are the ones who initiate a new criminal investigation. The victims, through their lawyers, can exercise the criminal action. In the Jesuits' case, is the first case in Spain ever filed where there was unanimous decision on the prosecutor's office to support the lawyers for the victims. You don't know the war criminals that are living right next door to you because they've tried to remake themselves in, in an image that completely is contrary to what they did back in their home country. If he gets extradited to Spain, which is what we are pushing for, that will be a very important trial. That will be a long trial with full evidence. They will be defended. He will have expensive lawyers. I think the most important impact will be for El Salvador. We need to go back to El Salvador and reconnect with the witnesses who are there to make sure that they are prepared and ready and willing. We need to go and dig a little bit further. There's some witnesses who've been unwilling to come forward in the past who may now be willing, now that they know that there's an actual criminal trial. Part of what this litigation is doing is trying to build a record of truth. It is so important for those who've endured violence to have a court of law look at that evidence and declare that what happened was wrong, that it was criminal, that, it, that people are liable for what they did. It sends such a powerful message and a powerful validation that in fact, truth will win out.